Okay, strike team. Time to come home. Shit, we're going down! Sadly, Weaver. Them coming home is not part of the plan. What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite for a spicy video here for you guys tonight. Thank you for all the support on episode 13 of Bombcast. In case you guys missed it, I'll have the link to it down below in the description. But tonight, we're going to talk about the prologue to Milder Toten, the shocking reveal in Operation Excision, and even a new discovery about a remake. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and let me know in the comments, are you guys still in need of a Season 4 Battle Pass for Black Ops Cold War or Warzone? For me, in-game right now, the gifting feature still doesn't work, but for my giveaway winners that I announced the other day, I did gift them in a bit of a different fashion through PayPal, which still worked, but hopefully when they fix this Battle Pass gifting feature in-game, I'll be able to gift more of you guys as soon as possible, but still let me know in the comments if you are in need, and I'll see what I can do. But quick spoiler, everybody has seen the cutscene by now for Operation Excision over an Outbreak, and ripped to our boy Raptor 1. He was there for people out there more than their own dads, from Demon Sheena, Firebase, and of course, the first Outbreak quest. So let's start off with a recap as to what happens during Operation Excision, the quest itself, and even the story implications that directly set up my or Toten, but bear with me because we have quite a bit of spicy material we're also going to go through deeper into this video. Now, what you want to do is make sure you get to round three, similar to the first Outbreak Easter Egg. You take as long as you need to set up on rounds one and two, get your points, get your salvage. Once you get to round three, you want to find a red rift that looks exactly like the purple rifts that you'll see at the edges of each map, which allow you to fast travel. There is one red rift per map, except for Sanatorium. Just how with the first quest, you weren't able to find the projector over in Ruka, but you were able to on every other map. I put all the locations on screen so you can see, thanks to COD Tracker. And if you get to Sanatorium, Sanatorium on round three, it's a bit of bad luck, I'm not gonna lie, but you just have to wait until round four until you can start this process. But once you find the red rift, just run through it, and while you're in the air, go through the next red rifts that will be in your line of sight, and after the third rift that you go through, drop down where you see a part falling, then complete the objective for the map that you're on. Once you're done with that, you wanna go over to the beacon that spawns in, and before warping, answer the telephone call from Ravenoff, and once he's done speaking, you'll then be able to warp to Sanatorium guaranteed, similar to the first Easter egg, where it'll take you to Ruka guaranteed at the very end of that that Easter egg as well. So once you're at Sanatorium, you want to go to this specific helicopter crash site located at this location, interact with the radio, and it'll start a lockdown. Once you've killed everybody, listen to the radio, and then look around for a red orb. Put all the locations on screen so you can see. There are only three that are known so far. It looks similar to the purple orb that'll sometimes spawn in on your region. That'll give you points and kill streaks, but this one's red. So the current known locations are as follows. Once you find the orb, you need to shoot it in the direction of the bridge, depending on where you're standing. So that'd be different for you in your game, but you have enough attempts you know you can mess this up you can shoot it as far as you want away from the bridge but you have enough attempts to make sure you get it to the bridge as soon as you want once you make it to the bridge it'll hover over this rover and you need to find a broken mystery box all the locations are on screen there are only three like i said and here on sanatorium you'll then find a broken mystery box at one of these spots and there will be a rabbit you can interact with upon interacting with it it'll spawn in a bunch of enemies and take care of them real quickly after that is done you could then pick up the rabbit and it'll be on your back depending on who's holding it it looks hilarious to look at so you don't want to take this rabbit over to the rover on the bridge. And once you're here, make sure you are absolutely set up with the loadout of your choice. Make sure your weapons are pack a punch, you have your perks, your armor, your weapon rarity upgraded, whatever that may be, because after this step begins, there is no going back. So interact with the rover. It'll then escort you to the inaccessible part of Sanatorium, which has never been in Zombies Outbreak before, but always was in multiplayer via fire team. We'll talk about how that theory did come true later on in this video. But similar to the rover objective that you usually see on the regions, it'll just go on a specific path every single time where zombies spawn in pretty frequently around where the rover is so defend it as best as you can it'll eventually take you to the giant statue where you can go up to the very top and find the unfortunately dead omega scientists who are trying to defect but as Kravchenko does say there is no leaving omega so unfortunately jagger the new character in the storyline did kill our scientist listen to the radio and then you can then drop down to the final part of this easter egg which is an xville but it's a bit different you have an order that spawns in along with some other heavy enemies so you have about five minutes to clear this whole area before you're able to finish the easter egg itself and that is operation excision what is easily i would say a top three or even top five easiest treyarch easter egg of all time i mean there's nothing wrong with that so in terms of the implications as to what happened here in operation excision let's break this down thanks to the man himself kaljitsu who by the way was part of the world's first squad to complete the second outbreak easter egg in just under an hour so the world's first squad was kaljitsu bench apirio almost said bench apirio greer galloway and lm steve congratulations to you guys you guys absolutely smacked this easter egg which is incredible. So, 
as a bit of a recap, thanks to Cal who actually sent me this information. His link is also down below in the description. Here's what's going on in Zombies right now, in case you guys are in need of a dire recap. So... We have confirmation that the boy over in the intel is not Eddie whatsoever. During the operation in Iran, we learned that Weaver was sent by the CIA to assassinate an official and he set the place on fire, assuming the man was in there, but he didn't know there was a little boy also in the building and then discover that the boy actually perished until after the fire was put out. He then told Samantha about this and felt a lot of guilt about this as we hear in several pieces of intel, but it is now confirmed the boy is not in any way related to the character of Eddie who left with Samantha into the bright lights at the end of Tag Their Toten. They have confirmation that that Volvo was Valentina's father. When she was about five or six, he appeared as a ghost and called her by her real name, which you don't know yet. He's been talking to her ever since. Now keep in mind, this is probably not the real Volvo and is likely the accursed one who is manipulating Valentina into freeing him from the Dark Aether. Very similar to how the Shadow Man manipulated everybody during the last Aether storyline, so I love the similarity there. We also have a twist that was revealed that Operation Inversion from the first Opera Easter was never meant to destroy the West, as we all thought. After Karchenko received the info that the one was real, the Mole got this from the director and leaked it, who we believe is Carver, but we'll get confirmation of that later. He took control of Inversion from Valentina, and the plan was to use the missiles to somehow stop or contain the One. So he essentially got screwed up big time by destroying those missiles over in that Easter egg. We probably should have saved them if we want to go ahead and take on the Accursed One, but we'll see how we take them on later in the story. We have confirmation that Peck has been talking to Zykov with the computer. Using Tempest for the Warheads was actually his idea, but he now says he's building a weapon to try and defeat the Accursed One, so... The Accursed is looking to be a boss that we have to team up with our enemies to actually defeat. So, very spicy material here for Mar the Toten. Kravchenko then finds out that Valentina has known about Peck talking to the computer for months and has been hiding it from him. So, Kravchenko is now really suspicious of Valentina, which, again, is going to tie into how Valentina is double-crossing Omega and Kravchenko as a whole with her own agenda. So, that'll probably unravel in DLC 3, of course. We now know that Valentina has been told by Vogel, or the Accursed one, we should say, that she needs to gather her things and give up her false life and to travel to Berlin to essentially free him. So we know the person who invented the Reike has given Valentina a device that allows her to open up small rifts to the Dark Aether, so we'll be using that over in Marder Toten. Now, Grey is revealed to have helped Samantha contact the Stripe team back in Main Quest 1. She gets a slap on the wrist from Reaver, which is great, because, you know, Weaver cares about her, and he understands the implication as to why she did that. Weaver also then gives her a warning that anybody above their pay grade can see what gets written on Requiem's mainframe. So pretty suspicious for the director, who we still don't know the identity of just yet. The director then orders Sam to be taken away for testing, and this is because Grey had made a note on there that Sam had a higher amount of Ethereum in her than any other subject, but had no signs of transformation. So Samantha was able to move a book using her powers, which blew Requiem away. So they're surprised by this, and in terms of what this is going to lead to is unknown, but Samantha has her Dark Ether energy inside of her. Whether or not she'll use that in Mother Toten is, of course, unknown right now, but the director wants to test her. So very curious who this director could be, right? Could this be Eddie? Definitely a possibility here. Now, Ravenoff then gets a burn notice from the USSR, essentially a kill on site order because they now know what he did and he is declared the enemy of the state because of what he did over in the first Outbreak Easter Egg. Now, what I find real interesting is that Zykov has been in the Dark Aether for about 14,000 days. That's many, many years, but he confirms that at about 4,500 days in the Aether, that'll leave us at about 1957, he tells us that the Elder Gods have always been fighting amongst themselves because they're at the very top of the hierarchy, but now the Accursed One looks like he might be able to win and rule alone. So 200 days after this, he writes that he's discovered that the Elder Gods have been in a stalemate for eons, and God knows how long that is, and so he points out it's really weird and pretty scary that the One is suddenly winning and is going to be successful, so he gives him the idea to start building a new device to try and seal it in. We don't know what the device is just yet, but what's important about this specifically is that the Accursed One wasn't always in charge, as opposed to the original Aether storyline where you had the One himself, which was always in charge, but then split in two with Monty and the Shadow Man, then you had a war between the Keepers and the Apothecans, None of that exists anymore, but then the tag your toe in, we sealed the Monty and the Shadow Man together as the Accursed One again. But once he was sent to the Dark Aether, he wasn't exactly in control. So who was? Who did the Accursed One defeat to remain in control again? So very spicy detail here for the future of Dark Aether. And let me know in the comments how you think about the story so far. I definitely think the approach as to how they're telling the story is different from how we saw it told in Black Ops 3 and 4. But it's at the roots of what Zombies was always like, right? Hearing the storyline through radios and ciphers. So that's why I'm like, wait, did you guys 
play zombies back in the day and understand the story back in the day if you guys are really hating on how the story is being told right now. I just don't get the hate for this. But one of my favorite parts about Operation Excision here in Outbreak is being able to see the jellyfish over in the last stage of the Easter egg. So could this be why Sanatorium was turned into Sanatorium Night specifically for Outbreak and not multiplayer? Just for the sake of seeing the jellyfish, maybe that was the case. Also gotta give credit where credit is due to Eric Maynard and the rest of the lore cast who did go ahead and theorize a little while back the Sanatorium would be the quote-unquote Ruka of the second Outbreak quest using the evidence we have from in-game intel, teasers from Treyarch, and it just made sense that, you know what, the second island of Sanatorium for whatever reason isn't accessible, but it just so happens to be radios at the very edge of the playable area of Sanatorium which do tease what to expect in this quest. And what do you know, here we are with the second island on the map. But the hypocrisy I see with the Easter egg hunts right now is that people out there, and I understand, want to have harder quests where they take hours and hours to solve, but typically, at least from my memory, almost every Easter egg aside from Revelations got solved in about a day. So what is the difference between solving the Easter egg in about an hour to three hours versus, let's say, five, six hours? The only people out there that I know that want to keep the hunts as long as possible are the people that are trying to make money off of the Easter egg streams. So I don't have an issue with an egg being solved in a couple of hours and then having a guided step list over on Reddit, or over on Discord, wherever that may be. I really don't mind that at all. But another thing too is if the Easter eggs were a little bit harder, let's say they incorporated Morse code and some of the tougher steps like the Garad Krovi valve, right? If that was the case where they use a website to solve some of these steps, then what's the difference between being guided in game, right? Through Intel or radios versus being guided through a YouTube video or a website. It's the same thing. It's just a different process as to how you're being guided. I mean, seeing a step as difficult as Morse code or as a valve step from Garad Krovi requires you to do some research and go through other means to be able to solve the step itself. It's not something that you can memorize every single time, unless you're a zombie extraordinaire. So that's why I'm confused with the complaints about difficulty. But the thing is, right, people complaining about that are in the minority of the zombies community. As sucks as it sounds to hear, right, that's the way it goes. Looking at the percentage of people that have completed Easter eggs over the years, it shocked me as well that very few people actually completed Easter eggs in Black Ops 1, 2, 3, and 4. But with Cold War, because of how casual the approach is to the Easter eggs, more people than ever are solving these Easter eggs. So Activision probably looked at this and says, you know what, this is system is here to stay. Now something that World's First Achiever Greer Galloway pointed out over on Twitter is that the steps in the second quest are steps that are built upon a concept already introduced in regularly playing Outbreak. For example, the Red Rifts, the Orb, the Bunny for the Broken Mystery Boxes. Those are all things that you can intuitively understand from prior knowledge of the mode if you played Outbreak. And that could be Treyarch's new approach to Easter egg steps, at least for this game, which is taking things already in the game, repurposing them for Easter egg steps so that people out there can have a quick understanding as to what to do or what you might need to do based on your prior knowledge of some of these regions. And I like that, right? You don't have to agree with this or like it whatsoever, but this is a new way they're trying to create Easter eggs for this game. And if you're like, wait, why is it so easy? Why this? Why that? All the whys could probably be answered with the feedback they got for Black Ops 4. People complain so much in Black Ops 4 about the quest being too hard, too story driven, not enough gameplay, XYZ, and they directly answer that with this game. So if anything, blame the majority of people out there that complain hell of a lot during the Black Ops 4 season, which is why Black Ops Cold War is just that much easier. Another great part about this Easter egg is, of course, the ending cutscene. So unfortunately, Raptor 1 does get the short end of the stick, and maybe he's alive. It looks like they drag his lifeless corpse out of the helicopter. He's probably dead, but hey, if he's alive, I'll take that. But Karchenko warns Weaver that now he is in charge of Requiem. So in terms of what the director is going to say about that once he gets revealed later is of course unknown. Kravchenko of course isn't the director, that's a given at this point but in terms of what happens next, right could we have a different crew talking to us over in Malagur Toten? So instead of having, you know, Weaver, Carver Strauss, Dr. Gray, could it be Kravchenko, Gorev, Peck, and then this mysterious Jagger character who mysteriously sounds like Rick Toffin for whatever reason but we know he isn't. <laughs> He's just a similar voice, right? This has me really intrigued that's what we're going to see over in DLC 3 and it's going to be a nice change of pace, right? Seeing a whole different crew talking to us and guiding us through this type of easter egg and also manipulating us because it might end up killing our crew at some point uh, in the future of Mother Toten, right? Because the crew we play as in Zombies for Black Ops Cold War isn't necessarily canon, right? They can be anybody. We are the crew. They aren't a set crew, which are specific characters, but they're anybody that we choose. So if we end up dying at some point, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because we'll just spawn in as whatever crew we want next. But what's important is that, you know, we still have Weaver, you know, Carver, Strauss, and Gray. They'll should be able to guide us at some point in the future after Mother Toten. And this is a theory wonderfully put together by the Lore Chat, a great Discord 
Discord that I'll have linked down below in the description. If you want to know more about the zombie storyline, theorize, or even get some spicy info in there as well, then I'll have that Discord also linked down below in the description. But also when it comes to the Mega Barrels, which made no appearance whatsoever here in Operation Excision, those of course leaked a couple of months ago, and I've theorized that maybe they aren't actually wonder weapons or arc-like attachments from Ghost that are coming to Black Ops Cold War. Maybe they were placeholders for this type of wonder weapon that, for whatever reason, spawns in as a placeholder XM4. I have the gameplay linked down below in the description in case you guys haven't seen it yet. But if they are truly Mega Barrels you attach onto your weapons, which could shut out the abilities of all the bosses in-game, then we end up seeing that in Mao the Toten. Maybe that's a possibility, but what I'm betting on is that we can end up seeing one wonder weapon added into that map, and then there are four elemental upgrades for it, similar to the die from the Machina, and some of the elemental upgrades could be the attacks from the bosses in-game. We have intel in-game already suggesting that there are experiments going on with the enemy types, and they're going to try to weaponize what their abilities are. But last and definitely not least, we have something that was noticed a couple of days ago, which lines up with exactly what I've been talking about over the past couple of months, and that is the radial tower that we could see in Chronicles Kino is actually seen in the gameplay tease for DLC 3 right there in the distance. Now, the Machina's intro we're able to see a specific map which has Berlin in it and upon looking at where the coordinates are it matches up where that radio tower is so without a doubt we're going to see Kino somehow in this map whether it's from a distance whether we get to go there through certain parts of the map was that leak that surfaced back in December true that Maruto will have gameplay elements from Kino and Verrucht how is this going to work but I definitely think this is a good discovery that at least right now confirms that the radio tower that was put in Chronicles Kino was put there intentionally because you want to make you feel like you're in Berlin now we're going to Berlin in an actual overrun city, we'll be able to see some part of Kino somewhere here on Milder Tone. But I'll leave you guys with this. The second outbreak quest was specifically labeled as a prologue to Berlin because they specifically wanted it to be very story driven, whereas the first main quest on Outbreak was a bit more gameplay driven, of course, with more steps that were a bit more tedious, and there was a boss fight, of course. Still replayable nonetheless, but the second quest was a bit of a bonus to get you guys prepared for the launch of their next round based map that's dropping at midpoint in July. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Might leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on Operation Excision, the story implications of this new Easter egg, and how do you feel about the discovery regarding a Kino remake potentially coming to Modern Toten? Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everyone.